In this session, we'll look at how we can create a custom set of parking standards for use with Autodesk vehicle tracking. I've just launched Civil 3D. I'm going to bring up the vehicle tracking tools. I'll do that by selecting the vehicle tracking tab in the ribbon. I'd like to start by creating a parking row using some default standards. Then we'll adjust the properties of those standards to meet our design requirements. Then we'll look at how we can save those standards for use in future drawings. To get started, we'll create a parking row. I'll do that by coming up to the parking panel. I'll launch the new row command. And then from here, I can select a parking standard. You can see that vehicle tracking comes with several regional standards. I'm going to come down to US parking standards and I'll select the ITE version. I will then choose proceed. This will copy those parking standards into the local drawing. From here, I could rename the standard. I'm just going to keep the default name for right now and I'll click OK. I will then click OK for the drawing settings. And then to draw the stalls, I will click once. We'll come over here to the right. I'll click again. I'll come down and click. And then I'll come back to the left and click. When I'm finished, I will right click. And then I need to tell Civil 3D where I'd like these stalls. Do I want them to the inside of the parking row or the outside? In this case, I'd like them on both sides. So I'm going to click at about the middle of the small icon. When I'm finished, I'll press escape. And then we'll back up and take a look. So you can see that we can create parking rows about as quickly as we can generate polylines in AutoCAD. While this parking geometry looks nice, it doesn't match my company standards. So I'd like to make some changes. Let's zoom in. I'm going to start by changing the properties of the end islands. To do that, we'll adjust the parking standard. I can do that by coming back up to the parking standards. I will then expand the pool. This shows me the standards that were copied into the local drawing. From here, I'll right click and I'll choose edit. Now, before I make any changes, notice the sheer number of settings that we have in this dialog box. You have near complete control over everything involved with these parking bays. I'm going to start by going to the general tab. Here's where we can give our standard a name. I'm going to call this my local standards. And then I'd like to change the properties of the end islands. So we'll go to the end islands tab. Right here, we can see a collection of settings that control the geometry of the end islands. For right now, I'm more concerned about the appearance of those islands, so I'm going to click the Line Style button. Note we can change the color, line type, and line weight of this geometry. I'm going to open the color property, and I'll come up and choose white for right now. I'll keep the remaining settings, and I'll click OK, and OK, and OK, and you can see the change on screen. Let's pan this over. I would also like to adjust the properties of the bend islands. We'll do the same thing. We'll go back to the standards. I will then go into the drawing pool. I'll right click and choose edit. This time we'll select the bend islands tab. You can see very similar geometry controls. Let's go over to line style. I'll open the color property and I would like these to be white as well. And I'll click OK and OK and OK. Let's zoom out. I'll pan the drawing over a little bit. Notice we have some construction geometry here. This blue line represents the width of the drive aisle. I can see some arrows here that show driving direction. I've also got some geometry here at the end of the islands. I don't know that I need that. Let's adjust the properties of these objects. Once again, we'll go back to the standards. I'll come down to the pool and I'll right click and choose edit. This time we'll select the construction lines tab. I'm going to turn off the island curb boundary. That's that vertical green line at the end of the island. I will then come down to the aisle clearance zone. We can see this is blue. It doesn't show up very well on a dark screen. Let's click the property button and I'm going to change its color to pen 31 for right now. Note I can also adjust the line type and line weight. Let me click OK. I will then click OK and OK. And once again, we can see those changes reflected on screen. Now, when it comes to the construction geometry, really we can make that whatever properties we want. We're probably not going to be printing these entities. Just for a second, I'm going to jump to the home tab. Let's go to the Layers panel. I just want to show you if I open the Layer Control and then drag this up, we can see that the construction lines are placed on this layer called Bay Construction. I can easily turn those objects on and off using this toggle. Let's make a couple more changes. I'm going to zoom in on the bays. I'd like to adjust the size of the bays next. In my area, the bays should be 18 feet long by 9 feet wide. Once again, we'll visit the standards. I'll right click on the standards in the drawing and I'll choose edit. To size the bays, we'll go to the vehicle classes tab. You can see there are two classes, large and small cars. The vehicle class is what sizes the parking bay. Large cars happens to be the default class, so I can size these very easily by setting the dimensions down here. The default bay length is going to be 18 feet and the default bay width will make this 9. Just for a second, we'll choose valid bay angles. 
Currently the standard supports 90 degree parking stalls, 75 degrees, 60 and 45. I'd like to add another angle, one that would represent on street parking. Let me choose new. That would be the zero angle. Now that I've added that angle, notice that the zero angle happens to be the default. Let me set this back to 90. Finally, we'll go to bay dimensions. Right here we can see the default bay sizes at these specific angles. Notice that the width will always be 9 feet whereas the length and depth will be based on the angle of the stall. That being said, if you wanted to get in here and make more granular adjustments, you can certainly do that if you want to. Now that I'm finished, I'll come down and click OK and OK, and you can see the stalls adjust slightly on screen. Next, I'd like to remove this gap here at the baseline, and I'd like to remove these T's at the end of the sidelines. Let's go back to the standard. From here, I'll choose Bay Markings. I will then come down to side lines. This is the property that controls this geometry right here. I'd like that geometry displayed. However, I do not want the offset. Let's set this to zero. I would also like to eliminate the sideline T markings. Let's remove that toggle. I'll click OK and OK. That's looking good. Let's take a look at one more thing. I'm going to select the parking row and then from the parking panel I'll choose the Edit Parking Bay button. This allows me to adjust the properties of an individual bay. All I have to do is click within the bay of my choice. From here I can select a bay type. The default standard includes two types, normal and disabled. I'm going to select disabled and I'll click OK. I will then press escape a couple times and then we'll zoom in and take a look. Now this disabled parking bay isn't bad but it doesn't exactly match the requirements I need for my design. As you can see we have a safety zone on either side of the parking stall. My local requirements put the safety zone on the driver's side only. That safety zone should also measure the width of a standard stall, or 9 feet. To make these adjustments, we'll go back to the standard. I'll right-click on my standards and choose Edit. This time I will choose Bay Styles. Right here you can see the two styles. Note that you can make more if you want to. I'm going to select Disabled for right now, and then I'll come down to Safety Zone, and I'll click the Ellipsis button at the end of the row. From here I can adjust the dimensional properties of the safety zone. As far as the driver, I'd like that to be 9 feet. And then for the passenger side, we'll make that 0. I do not need these small offsets, so we'll set that to 0. Likewise, I do not need to share the safety zone, so I'll remove this check. When I'm finished, I'll come down and click OK. And then very important, before I leave this dialog box, I will flip this back to normal, because normal represents my default base style. Let's click OK and OK, and we'll take a look. This is now looking a lot closer to my design requirements. At this point, if additional changes were necessary, I could repeat the process, go back and forth between the standards and the drawing until this is dialed up to exactly what I need. When I'm ready, I can then save these standards for use in future drawings. Let's look at how we can do that. I'm going to come back to the Standards dialog box. I will then right-click on the word Pool, and we'll give this a more logical name. I'll choose Edit, and I'll call this My Company Standards, and I'll click OK. I will then right-click on the My Company Standards group name, and I'll choose Save Parking Standard File As. This will save the standards with an ATS extension. Note that it's going to save it on the C drive under the Users folder, under the Login Name, Documents, My Vehicle Tracking Data, Library. I'm going to call this My Custom Standards, and I'll click Save. I will then click OK. Finally, let's close out of Civil 3D. We won't save changes. I will then relaunch Civil 3D. When this comes up, we'll take our new standard for a test drive. I'm going to create a new parking row. This brings up the Standard Explorer. From here, we have the new My Company Standards group. Let me expand this. I will then select My Local Standards, and I'll click Proceed. I can then click OK. I can accept the scale and I can start generating parking stalls. As you can see, Autodesk Vehicle Tracking comes with a large collection of regional standards. We can use those standards if we like, or they could represent the starting point for a new set of standards. Using the Parking Standards Editor, we can dial up specific settings to meet virtually any design requirement. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.